players first encounter the Gravemind in Halo 2, the Master Chief comes face to face with the oversized Audrey 2-esque flood monstrosity after being blasted into the waters of Delta Halo. Wait, plants not your speed? How about Cronenberg Horror Demon? Right, anyway. Brought together by the Gravemind, Master Chief and Arbiter are forced to become unlikely allies as the Gravemind sends them on a team up to stop the Covenant leadership from dooming sentient life in the galaxy by activating the Halo Ring. The Gravemind, of course, has bigger plans. By the time of Halo 3, the Gravemind has turned the Covenant city ship High Charity into a flood hive and threatens the galaxy with doom for the first time in the 100,000 years since the Halo Array last fired. Chief ends up halting the flood once again at the Ark, but the Gravemind promises that he's only been delayed, not stopped. Defeat is simply the addition of time to a sentence I never deserved, but you imposed. And that brings up some questions, especially once Greg Bear's Forerunner trilogy took us back to the Forerunner Flood War and showed us many grave minds as the flood became unstoppable. And the grave mind in the Halo video games appears to remember that conflict. But how does he remember? Shouldn't the Gravemind have died when the Forerunners activated the rings? Or are the past and present Gravemind's different entities? The simple answer is yes and no. Let's dig a bit deeper. First hinted at in Combat Evolve with the flood form we see absorbing keys, the flood started a feral, animalistic, and instinctual stage, but as they absorb more beings, they become more coordinated. Games like Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2 show that the Flood create intermediate key minds that work to organize and direct the Flood, as well as more sophisticated Flood forms. Eventually, this leads to the Grave Mind itself, which, as recorded in Halo Silentium, can grow to basically swallow up whole planets, controlling every aspect of the Flood across the galaxy. The key point here is that the Flood appear to have an overarching consciousness. As the Gravemind converses with its foreigner foes in Silentium, or with Cortana in the short story Human Weakness, the Gravemind might be a melting pot of a billion absorbed individuals in their memories, but it's also got a cunning and rather individual personality of its own, and that personality remains contiguous despite the firing of the Halo Array. So the simple answer is that the Flood Consciousness isn't stored in a physical location, it can be accessed remotely, namely by lumping a bunch of corpses together until they become smart. Ew. So where does this Flood Consciousness reside? The first possibility is that it resides in the Domain. As the Forerunner Trilogy reveals, the Flood arose from the very last of the Precursor, and the Domain itself was a Precursor invention, a sort of possibly sentient, highly inscrutable future knowledge repository. It makes sense that the corrupted precursors would store their intelligence in the domain, but there's some problems with that theory. For one, the Gravemind in Silentium doesn't seem to have control over the domain itself. The librarian credits the domain with influencing her to bait the flood to Earth, giving the Isodidact more time to fire the Halo Array, for example, which doesn't square with a domain that's interested in furthering the Gravemind's goals. Moreover, the domain was said to be tinged with sadness over the looming end of the Forerunners. That too doesn't sound like a flood-controlled construct. Beyond that, the domain is, like other precursor structures, affected by the Halo's firing. The Gravemind taunts the librarian that the destruction of the flood means the destruction of the domain as well, dooming the Erdidact to nothing but silence in his cryptum, which is partially why he's so cranky in Halo 4. Imagine spending 100,000 years without the internet, it'd make anyone go crazy. So it seems like, if the Flood Consciousness had been housed in the Domain, it'd have been destroyed or otherwise noted. The best answer as to where the Flood Consciousness resides is found in a very unlikely place, Catherine Halsey's journal, produced with Halo Reach. Halsey never discusses the Flood in this journal, which predates modern humanity's first contact with the Parasite. However, in its pages, Halsey discusses the limited lifespan of smart AIs and comes up with a novel possibility for beating those restrictions. What if space weren't a limitation? Although we are limited to three dimensions, in our four-dimensional space-time there remains another space to exploit, slipstream space. AI is in the slipstream. Would there be near limitless cross-connections? FTL processing speeds? What couldn't they do? Are we ready for that? Halsey's first and only experiment apparently failed, but what if the idea is solid? 
the Grave Mind's consciousness exists in slipspace itself, accessed and coordinating the flood once it can re-establish a connection. It explains the persistence despite the destruction of the domain, and just how the Grave Mind can summon the memories of every single being it absorbs. More interestingly, it suggests that there might be a real way to truly stop the flood threat if you could destroy that consciousness. Slip space is weird and not well understood by humanity or the Covenant, but perhaps the ultimate solution to the ever-present flood threat will be found there.